Okay, so tonight we are discussing the calendar of Yahuwah. My name is Brother Justin, also known as Yashar, and I am from the tribe of Judah. All right, so to begin, these are some important points to know. The calendar of Yah is governed by the luminaries. These are the sun, the moon, and the stars as they move through heaven. The courses of the luminaries were shown to Enoch, Noah, Moses, David, Solomon, and Ezra, these prophets. And throughout the presentation, you will see the records showing that they had this knowledge. Now, these luminaries were created on the fourth day of the week. And on their, at their creation was how, was when they started on their course. So that initiated the calendar. You will also see that the sun is a great sign in the heavens and which marks days, Sabbaths, months, feasts, years, Sabbaths of years, jubilees, and all the seasons of the year, right? The calendar is 364 days long. And this differs from the solar cycle or course which is 365.25 days long. So let's begin with creation, Genesis chapter one and verse 14. And Elohim said, let lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and appointed times and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it came to be so. And Elohim made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And Elohim set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness and Elohim saw that it was good and there came to be evening and there came to be morning the fourth day so note the lights in the heavens were created on the fourth day of the week and they are signs for time. The greater light, which is the sun, rules over the day, and the lesser light, which is the moon, rules over the night. The stars also rule over the night. Now, when you look at verse 19, it says here, after these cre this creation was done, there came to be evening. What happens after evening is the night. So the creation occurred during the daytime. So the day came before the night. So during the day, Yah created the sun, the moon, and the stars. And when he was finished, there came to be evening, and then there came to be morning, the fourth day. So let's move on. Now, the prophet Moses was given a, a similar record. And he wrote what he was shown on Mount Sinai in the book of Jubilees, what is called Jubilees. 
So I'm looking at the book of Jubilees, chapter 2 and verse 8. And it says here, And on the fourth day, he created the sun and the moon and the stars, and set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon all the earth, and to rule over the day and the night, and divide the light from the darkness. And Elohim appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days and for Sabbaths and for months and for feasts and for years and for Sabbaths of years and for Jubilees and for all seasons of the years. So Yab appointing the sun to be a great sign for all of these different points in time tells us that we must note the movement of the sun to know when a day begins and when it ends, to know when there's the Sabbath, to know when a month begins, even to know the feasts which are recorded in Leviticus chapter 23. Yah gave us the Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread and six other feasts, which are appointed times on his calendar in their seasons. The sun is also used to mark when the year begins. It also signals Sabbaths of years and Jubilees and all seasons of the years. So if we use another light, right, to tell us when these things are, then there will be disorder in Yah's calendar. Continuing. Jubilees chapter 4 and verse 16. And in the 11th Jubilee, which was 512 to 518 a.m., Jared took to himself a wife, and her name was Baraka, the daughter of of Rasujal, a daughter of his father's brother in the fourth week of this Jubilee, 522 AM. And she bare him a son in the fifth week, in the fourth year of the Jubilee. And he called his name Enoch, and he was the first among men that are born on earth who learnt writing and knowledge and wisdom, and who wrote down the signs of heaven according to the order of their months in a book. So this book that he recorded this information is called the Book of Enoch. So he wrote down the signs of heaven according to the order of their months in a book that men might know the seasons of the years according to the order of their separate months. And he was the first to write a testimony, and he testified to the sons of men among the generations of the earth, and recounted the weeks of the Jubilees, and made known to them the days of the years, and set in order the months, and recounted the Sabbaths of the years, as we made them known to him. So as the angels of heaven, led by Uriel, who showed Enoch these things so that he could record them. He was translated into heaven and he saw the movement of the sun, the moon, and the stars. So we're going to the book of Enoch now. Sorry, let me finish off two more verses in Jubilees. 
Jubilee chapter 4, verse 21. And he was moreover with the angels of Elohim these six jubilees of years, and they showed him everything which is on earth and in the heavens, the rule of the sun, and he wrote down everything. Good. So the book of Enoch is separated into different sections. And we're going to chapter 72 in the book of the courses of the heavenly luminaries. Enoch chapter 72 and verse one. The book of the courses of the luminaries of the heaven, the relations of each according to their classes, their dominion and their seasons, according to their names and places of origin, and according to their months, which Uriel, the holy angel, who was with me, who is their guide, showed me. And he showed me all their laws exactly as they are. And how it is with regard to all the years of the world and unto eternity, till the new creation is accomplished, which drift to eternity. Verse two. And this is the law, this is the first law of the luminaries. The luminary, the sun, has its rising in the eastern portals of the heaven and its setting in the western portals of the heaven. So the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west. Verse four, and first there goes forth the great luminary named the sun and his circumference is like the circumference of the heaven and he's quite filled with illuminating and heating fire. So verse four is telling us that the sun is the first to rise in the east. It leads all the other luminaries. Everything else, the moon and the stars come after the sun. So the sun sets the pace when it comes to time. So when the sun rises, that's the beginning of your day. Verse seven. And in that fourth portal from which the sun rises in the first month, are 12 window openings from which proceed a flame when they're opened in their season. When the sun rises in the heaven, he comes forth through that fourth portal, 30 mornings in succession and sets accurately in the fourth portal in the west of the heaven. So when the sun rises in the east, at the beginning of the year, it rises in the fourth portal. And that first month, it rises 30 mornings. So that first month is 30 days. And it sets in the west. Verse 9. And during this period, the day becomes daily longer and the night nightly shorter to the 30th morning. So the first month begins the first season of the year, which is spring. So that first month is 30 days and each day gets gradually longer and longer and longer. So this is a picture showing how these months are broken down into their seasons. You have spring, the first month, 30 days. The middle of spring, the second month, 30 days. Your third month, late spring, also 30 days. Now, this, this third month will have an extra day to make it 31 
as it transitions from spring into summer. So spring will have 91 days, each month 30, 30, 31. So it begins at the vernal equinox, right? Which is the beginning of spring. And it ends as it transitions at the summer solstice. Similarly, the summer has 91 days, 30, 30, 31. Then you have the autumnal equinox as it transitions from summer into autumn. Autumn season, no different, three months, 91 days, 30, 30, 31, ending with the winter solstice. And then for your winter season, same thing again, 91 days, three months, 30, 30, 31. So the total number of days in a year will number 364 days. Now, when you divide that by seven, you will get 52, which shows us that there will be 52 weeks in the calendar year. And of course, these numbers are written in the book of Jubilees, as well as the book of Enoch. So turn into Enoch chapter 72, verse 31. And on that day, the sun rises from that portal and sets in the west and returns to the east and rises in the third portal for one and 30 mornings and sets in the west of the heaven. On that day, the night decreases and amounts to nine parts and the day to nine parts and the night is equal to the day, and the year is exactly as to its days, 364. See that? So the last month of the year has 31 days, and the year totals 364 days. And the time between the day and the night is equal at the end of the year. So during summer, the days get longer and the nights shorter until the day becomes twice as long as the night. Then during summer, the days start to get shorter and the nights longer until they're equalized again when autumn hits. Then during not autumn, the nights get longer and the days get shorter until the night is twice as long as the day. That's winter now. And then winter, the nights get shorter and the days get longer until there are equal parts day, equal parts night. 364 days. Note this next verse, verse 33. And the length of the day and of the night and the shortness of the day and of the night arise. Through the course of the sun, these distinctions are made. So when it says through the course of the sun, these distinctions are made. That literally means they are separated. So there's a separation between the lengthening of the day and the shortening of the night. So as you transition from the end of the year, 364 days into the next year, there is a period of separation what happens during that separation? 
So Moses yeah, revealed it to David. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 1. The heavens are proclaiming the esteem of El. That is the Most High. And the expanse is declaring the work of his hand. Day to day pours forth speech. And night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech and there are no words. Their voice is not heard. Their line is, has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them, he set up a tent for the sun. And it is like a bridegroom coming out of his room. It rejoices like a strong man to run the path. Its rising is from one end of the heavens and its circuit to the other end. And nothing or not is hidden from its heat. So note some key words here. Yah set up a tent for the sun. A tent is something you enter for shelter and then you exit. Right? And it says here, it is like a bridegroom coming out of his room. Right? It rejoices like a strong man to run the path. So the sun has a path or a course that it travels through the heavens. Right? The heavens, it says, is like a circumference, just like the sun. It is a, a sphere. And the sun goes through its course through the heavens like a, like a cycle. At the end of that circuit or cycle or path, there is a tent or tabernacle the sun enters in and then leaves. So the calendar or the path would take the 364 days, but when the sun enters into this tabernacle, it spends at least one day. So that makes up for that extra day or two days every leap year, which is every four years. So this picture screenshot is taken using um, a web app called Sterilium. And at the spring equinox, the sun literally crosses the equator or the east point. So this line E, right? This is 90 degrees. It's like a line in the heavens. And the scientists say, when the sun touches that line, it is the spring equinox, right? So I drew this box here showing a tabernacle, right? Because the next day, Before I say that, um, south of this east line is the southern hemisphere, and north of this east line is the northern hemisphere. So there is a thick space the sun goes through, moving from one hemisphere into the next one. Right? And the hemispheres are so different in terms of time. It is 
important to note. The Northern Hemisphere begins the spring season in the month of March. The Southern Hemisphere begins the spring equinox in September. So this particular section of the sky is like a buffer between seasons as well as time. So what is the vernal equinox? It's taken from Britannica.com. The vernal equinox are two moments in the year when the sun is exactly above the equator. So let me go back. You see this east line? This east line marks the equator. So the vernal equinox are two months in the year when the sun is exactly above the equator and day and night are of equal length. Just like what we read in the book of Enoch. Also, either of the two points in the sky where the ecliptic, the sun's annual pathway, and the celestial equator intersect. Now, I didn't show the ecliptic in this. Actually, I did. So the line here at an angle looks like 45 degrees. That is the ecliptic. That is actually the path the sun is moving. So where the ecliptic crossed the equator, right? It says here, is the vernal equinox. So there are two points in the sky where the ecliptic meet the equator. So that this is one this is one of those um, interceptions. In the northern hemisphere, the vernal equinox falls about March 20th or 21st. As the sun crosses the celestial equator going north, so this is the equator, this is ecliptic. And in March 20, the spring equinox, the sun is moving towards the left because the left is towards the north, right? So the sun will go towards the north and then when it gets northeast, it will turn and come back south until it comes back here for the autumn. And then it keeps going south until it gets southeast. Then it turns around and come back, comes back here. Right, so that is the course of the sun. So the sun crosses the celestial equator going north at the vernal equinox, March 20th or 21st. In the Southern Hemisphere, the equinox occurs on September 22nd or 23rd, when the sun moves south across the celestial equator. According to the astronomical definition of the seasons, the vernal equinox also marks the beginning of spring. Good. So, We look to March 20th or 21st to know when there is a spring equinox. And then we know when the year begins because then the next day will be the beginning of the year, right? Now this guy is a Luda Equiano. He was an Igbo who was enslaved by the Europeans and taken to the Americas to be a slave. 
However, he was quite intelligent and he impressed his masters and learned to read and write. He learned to read the Bible and he started to write his life story. And in his narrative, his autobiography, I recount something that was very interesting to the topic because he spoke a lot about his early life before he was taken by the Europeans. So in chapter one, section 29 on page 27, Aluda Equiano writes, we compute the year from the day on which the sun crosses the line. What line is he talking about? He's talking about that line in the heavens called the equator. This is in Africa. This is in the 1700s. Aluda Aquiano says, we compute the year from the day on which the sun crosses the line. And on its setting that evening, there is a general shout throughout the land. At least I can speak from my own knowledge. So, they mark the day on which the sun crosses the line. Let me, go, let me go back. This line here, the equator. When the sun cross the line, they begin the year. So it's the day that the sun is on the line, you do not count that day. It is the day when it cross it. When it passes it, when it has left the tabernacle. And they celebrate the new year with this knowledge. So this goes on now, telling us that the solar year is 365 days, five hours, 48 minutes, 46 seconds. Remember the, the Enoch calendar, the calendar of Yah has 364 days. So the solar year accounts for extra time. So there must be something that happens in the heavens to account for it. So that is the length of the solar year. And it's also called a tropical year or a year of the seasons, which is the time between two successive occurrences of the vernal equinox, which is the moment when the sun apparently crosses the celestial equator moving north. So to summarize, the equinox date is the 365th day and is not counted on the calendar nor does the leap day, the 366th day, count on the calendar every four years because the sun is in its tent on those days and that is the bridegroom's chamber. So this is a breakdown of the Enoch calendar again. It is divided into four seasons. 12 months. Each season has 30, uh, 91 days and the months run 30, 30, 31 to give you 364 days. So we go back to the Moses, Jubilees chapter six, verse 27. And on the new moon of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains were seen and Noah was glad. 
Now, it says the new moon here, right? Of the 10th month. May you go into the definition of new moon in the Hebrew, you get Kadesh, right? Which means new month. Sure, the crowning will be made available to everyone. So the new moon of the 10th month, the 10th month begins the season of winter. Let me go back to the calendar again. You see, you have four points, vernal equinox, summer solstice, autumn equinox, winter solstice, right? They are, these are the beginning of seasons. So the beginning of seasons is the new moon, the new month, the Kodesh. The first day, so the first day of the first month, Abib, is the new moon of the first month. Then the new moon of the fourth month begins summer. The new moon of the seventh month begins autumn, and the new moon of the tenth month begins winter. So Noah was glad when he saw the tops of the mountains on the new moon of the tenth month. And I will show you um, the Hebrew for new moon when I finish the slides. <clears throat> Continuing. And on this account, he ordained for them himself as feasts, as a memorial forever, and thus are they ordained. And they placed them on the heavenly tablets. Each had 13 weeks. So let's do some mathematics again. 13 by 7 gives us 91. So the 13 weeks corresponds to a whole season. So each new moon has 13 weeks. So it does not correspond to the actual lunar phase called new moon. The lunar phase new moon occurs every 29 and a half days. But the new moon that Noah and Moses were uh, taught corresponds to the new moon of the seasons, which is the beginning of each season. And these had 13 weeks between them. So they placed them on the heavenly tablets, each had 13 weeks from one to another, past their memorial, from the first to the second, and from the second to the third, and from the third to the fourth. And all the days of the commandment will be two and 50 weeks of days. So remember, in Jubilee chapter two, Yah said that the sun is the great sign in heaven for everything. Let me go back. Jubilee chapter 2, verse 9. And Yah appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days and for Sabbaths and for months and for feasts, and for years, and for Sabbaths of years, and for Jubilees, and for all seasons of the years. So for the seasons of the years, there are four seasons. Each season is separated by 13 weeks, and each of them has a new moon dividing them. 
So we depend on the sun to know that division, not the moon. Let's go back down. Jubilees chapter six, verse 30. And all the days of the commandment will be two and 50 weeks of days, right? And these will make the entire year complete. Thus it is engraven and ordained on the heavenly tablets. And there is no neglecting this commandment for a single year or from year to year. So this is how they calculate time in heaven is recorded on the heavenly tablets. Verse 32, and command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 364 days, and these will constitute a complete year. And they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts, for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony. And they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all their seasons and the years will be dislodged from this order and they will disturb the seasons and the years will be dislodged and they will neglect their ordinances and the, all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of the years and will forget the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths and they will go wrong as to all the order of the years. So Yah is telling Moses and he's telling Noah that if we do not observe the year according to this order, three, I made the year 364 days before counting the 365th and 366th day, we will disturb everything concerning time because we will forget the Sabbath day. We will forget the new moon, which begins the season. And we will forget when the year starts. And that, has, that is what has happened. That has happened to our people. And this is why everybody has a different date for every holy day and even every Sabbath. Because some will tell you the Sabbath is on Saturday. Some will tell you the Sabbath is on Sunday. Some will tell you the Sabbath changes every lunar cycle. Some will tell you the Sabbath is every Wednesday. The Mosai does not like. We have forgotten the Sabbath day. All right, so here I will entertain questions and discussion. Yeah, so my how was my presentation? It was clear. Presentation was great. Praise yeah, hallelujah.
Okay, so let me get. Go ahead, you can answer a question. It's clear. It's clear. But that's more the question is no, is how do we um, restitute this in a way that uh, all people can actually have it so that the, uh, you, know, you know, for the issue, everything um, to the point of where you have to say, <laughs> You're, you're no longer saying money, not money choosing, but to the Friday. It pushes you to the first, second, third, fifth, sixth day. Um, and then the way how life for, for most people has become big has a circular uh, structure time. You know, uh, get, get it back there. How do we choose? Is in a way that we all could see, you know, visually see it, so you know it, and then how does how is life going after? Okay, this is a very um, loaded question. Um, okay, so for starters, right. The days of the week are named after Roman gods. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Right? And this seven-day week was not always um, how the Romans were record time. They had an eight-day week before um, Julius Caesar came up with the Julian calendar, and then it was revised by, in um, 1582 by Pope Gregory. So number one in tenant is we have to tell our people that we are following a calendar given to us by the Gentiles, the Romans, right? And Yah is the one who is in control of time. When Yah created the heavens and the earth, he named them first day through to seventh day, right? Now, how you follow the actual time of Yah using the Enoch calendar, the fourth day of the week, right, which is the midst of the week, was actually when the calendar began. So three days after the fourth day in Genesis one was when Yah celebrated the Sabbath day. So when the, the, the calendar resets itself and you go into a new year, right? The calendar begins in the midst of the week and three days later is the Sabbath day. And because the sun must go through its full course, right? Before you start the calendar, remember it has to go into the tabernacle. That first day, the first month, when you compare it to the Gregorian calendar, day of the week, that will change. So that means that every seven years, you will have Sabbath on Saturday, right? One out of seven, you'll be Saturday. The next year, it could be Sunday. The next year, it'll be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So trying to follow the growing calendar and keep the Sabbath day on one particular day of the week means that you would not be in line with um, Yah and in heaven solely by trying to follow the Enoch calendar. The two calendars do not agree. 
So I actually have a printout, right? Let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is my printout of the Enoch calendar. The fourth day of the week is when the equinox is, right? The midst of the week. So that day is not counted. So the first day, the first month, the fifth day, second day, the sixth, and then the third day is Shabbat, rest, right? So you're always checking in terms of the new year. You're always checking when the sun, right, crosses the equator for that vernal equinox. And you know that the next day is your new year, your first day. So if the Enoch calendar, then you can know when your Shabbat is, right? And knowing when Shabbat is, you also know when Passover is. Passover is in the midst of the week. Passover is never on Shabbat. And in the scripture, Matthew chapter 26, when Yahushua HaMashiach, right? He celebrated Passover with his disciples. He spent three days and three nights in the belly of the earth and he rose at the end of Shabbat. However, the chief priests and the scribes had a different calendar. Right, so they were not in line with him, showing you that the children of Israel did forget when the Sabbath was. If we have enough time, we could probably go through it. But I just want to show you this calendar, and then I wanted to give the definition for new moon. So this is the first month which is called Abib, and that's recorded in book of Deuteronomy chapter 16. And I can take you there as well. So Rishon Kodesh means on uh, the first month, right? So you have Passover the 14th day, and then seven days of unleavened bread. So you have the second month, Shani Kodesh. Third month, Shalishi Kodesh. And Pentecost, which is another holy day, is reckoned seven Sabbaths after Passover. I mean, where you wave the sheaf and then you come the 50th day, right? So you have Pentecost or Shavuot in the third month. The fourth month, Rebrei Kodesh, is when summer begins. The fifth month, Kimishi Kodesh. The sixth month, Shishi Kodesh. And the seventh month, Shibi Kodesh. The first day of the seventh month, is Yom Teruah, a memorial burn of trumpets, which is also the new moon of the seventh month. You have the Day of Atonement on the 10th day, Shabbat. And then you have Sukkot for seven days. And then the eighth day you have in gathering, Feast and gathering. The eighth month, Shemi Kodesh. The ninth month, Tisha Kodesh. 
And then this month is the Feast of Dedication. That's in the Book of Maccabees. The 10th month is Siri Kadesh. Here you have the new moon of the 10th month to begin winter. The 11th month, Ashti Kadesh. And the 12th month of Adar, Shneim Kadesh. And you have Purim, the Feast of Lots in this month. All right. So every Hebrew can have a record of this and follow um, Yah's calendar on their own. Now, so I'm taking you to Psalm chapter 81. Psalm chapter 81, starting from verse 3. It says here, blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the Elohim of Jacob. Right? The new moon here is Kadesh. And in the book of Jubilees, it says that there are four new moons, each one signaling the beginning of a season. So that was when they blew the shofar, and that was a feast day. Now, the book of Jubilees has some more information concerning why Israel fell off. So I can share that with you as it is very important as well. Jubilees chapter six. Okay, let me zoom in some more. Jubilees chapter six, starting from verse 34. And all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of the years and will forget the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths and they will go wrong as to all the order of years. For I know and from henceforth will I declare it unto thee, and it is not of my own devising. For the book lies written before me, and on the heavenly tablets, the division of days is ordained. Lest they forget the feast of the covenant, and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles, after their error and after their ignorance. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year, 10 days too soon. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day, the day of testimony and an unclean day, a feast day. And they will confound all the days the holy with the unclean, and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months, and Sabbaths, and feasts, and jubilees. See that? So by lunar observation, the nation of Israel goes very deep into error 
And this goes as far back as the priesthood. The Sadducees were in control of the temple post Babylon. Remember, Israel was taken into captivity into Babylon for 70 years. And in, it was in Babylon that they were, they were exposed to the Babylonian lunar calendar. And this is documented information because the Pharisees and the Sadducees were the ones who have a lunisolar calendar. In fact, let me show you the information. First, I will go here. This is a screenshot I took of the Jewish virtual library, right? You have the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the Essenes. The Sadducees' social class was priests and aristocrats, right? They followed a lunisolar calendar. The lunisolar calendar is one where the, the month, right, is determined by the slither of the new moon. So the moon is dark, and then you, sight, you look for when the sliver appears in the evening, right? And they count the evening as the beginning of the day. So that's two errors. The Pharisees had a similar lunar calendar. They didn't watch the sliver though, but they marked it by the dark moon, which is the new moon according to scientists today. The Essenes have a solar calendar right, which they observed. Now, the Dead Sea Scrolls may or may not have been written by the Essenes. However, it is amongst the Dead Sea Scrolls that you have evidence of the Enoch calendar. And the people who were recording the Enoch calendar also recorded the time for the lunar solar calendar kept by the Pharisees and Sadducees because they wanted to keep track of time and it seemed as though they were priests because they would want to get back into authority and reset the order of things. So they had the Enoch candle recorded alongside the Lunisola candle to keep record of time and they also recorded the names of the priestly families which were operating in the temple every single week. So tell me, is this by mistake? I, I, I think not. So let's get, let's see here. Right. So the same Jewish virtual library tells us the most important of the three were the Pharisees because they are the spiritual fathers of modern Judaism. So the Jewish people are the sons of the Pharisees, right? In terms of doctrine we already know that they are not related to the children of Israel by blood. Their main distinguishing characteristic was a belief in an oral law that Elohim gave to Moses at Sinai with the Torah. The Torah or written law was akin to the US constitution in the sense that it set down a series of laws that were open to interpretation. The Pharisees believed that Yah also gave Moses the knowledge of what these laws meant 
and how they should be applied. This oral tradition was codified and written down roughly three centuries later in what is known as the Talmud. See that? So, according to the Pharisee doctrine, the written law, the Torah was not enough. They had to write a commentary as an explanation for the Torah. This Talmud is the Babylonian Talmud. And it is very corrupt and perverse. Hmm. Moving on. Let's talk about the Sadducees. The Sadducees were elitists who wanted to maintain the priestly caste. But they were also liberal in their willingness to incorporate Hellenism into their lives, something the Pharisees opposed. So the Sadducees were those Israelites in the book of Maccabees who incorporated Hellenism and were instrumental in allowing the setup of those abominations in the temple. Remember when the Greeks came in and, and sacrificed swine's flesh on the altar? So the Sadducees continue with this Hellenism they inherit from the Greeks. They rejected the idea of the oral law and insisted on a literal interpretation of the written law. Consequently, they did not believe in afterlife since it's, it is not mentioned in the Torah. The focus of Sadducee life was rituals associated with the temple. The Sadducees disappeared around 70 AD after the destruction of the second temple. None of the writings of the Sadducees has survived. So the little we know about them comes from their Pharisaic opponents. These two parties served in the great Sanhedrin, a kind of Jewish Supreme Court made up of 71 members whose responsibility was to interpret civil and religious laws. So, Yahusha was constantly in contention with these two groups. They are the ones, right, who spearheaded his crucifixion. And they're the ones who continue the corruption amongst our people. So the calendar is one of these corruptions. Right. Anything, um, anyone like to you know, ask any questions, any comments? I'm not hearing you clearly, um, Brother Barnabas. No, I just wanted to find out. Um... So when you say, um, I, I just want to get my my mind around it. So when the year, like for you, you said, is it the 20th of March? The, 20th, the beginning of the year. Okay. So the, the, 20th, the 20th of March will mark 
the vernal equinox, the spring equinox, right? Mm -hmm. So that will tell you um, that the sun has ended its course. And then the next day, right? If it's not mm -hmm. the year, the next day will be in your year. Okay, so so that should be that. Should, so the counting should start on that day is day one. No, you wouldn't count the equinox day. You will count the following day. The following day, okay. The following day will be the day one. So when you come to the seventh day, normally you are saying that's why you are saying uh, it could fall on a on a Wednesday. It could fall on any other day. Exactly. And that should be the Sabbath. Uh, right. So. Day one would be the day after the equinox, right? Hmm. But day three would be Shabbat. Day three would be Shabbat. Yeah. Because, hmm. yeah, the equinox date is the fourth day of the week according to creation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So three days oh. later will be Shabbat. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting because um, I, I know that, uh, sorry, um, I, have to, I was just, I, was, I always wondered why in, in back in Zimbabwe, um, the, the day of rest was on a Thursday. Mm. And it's, and I don't know why, is that, so I'm, just, I'm asking the question which I don't really have enough information. But it's just that uh, it always wanted to know why they rested on Thursday. It is a day of rest. Mm. So, and that's they used to call that their Sabbath. And I always wondered why was it a midweek? So this might just answer that question, what you have just mentioned there. Wow. Um, yeah, I think that's why. Yeah, because I always wondered why they said on this day is the Sabbath. And, and it doesn't fall and doesn't fall on in the days which we call Sabbath. So mm -hmm. maybe that does answer the question why. Right. Okay. Mm, thank you for that. You're welcome. Okay, so let me show you the um the calendar, right? The equinox date this year is March 20th, which is a Sunday, right? So on this app, Sterilium, I can turn to March 20th. And at sunrise, you see the sun here as it cuts the equator directly east. All right? This is the equinox date, March 20th, Sunday. So the next so you, you look at the sunrise when you are counting the equinox, when you're looking at the equinox day. The following day, right? When the sun rises, it is north of the equator. It doesn't cut it. So the Monday is the first day of the first month, right? So, the 22nd will be the, 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 the second day. And then the 23rd will be the third day. So the 23rd of March will be our first Shabbat. So let me come back again. March 20th, sunrise is equinox day. March 21st, the first day of the first month of Abib. March 22nd, the second day of the first month. The 23rd, the third day of the first month. So on and so forth. And for those who um, may have wanted to see the name of the first month, you can go to Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 1. It says, 
observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God, Yahuwah the Elohim. For in the month of Abib, Yahuwah the Elohim brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. So this month, this, we celebrated Passover and, um, by night was commanded to be the beginning of months. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 1. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take them, them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. So then it goes on to the instructions for the Passover. And Leviticus 23 is the chapter you go to to know the different holy days and feasts, right? And Yahuwah speak unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of Yahuwah, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations our holy gatherings, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahuwah in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of Yahuwah, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. So it lists Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, so on and so forth in this chapter. Anyone else have questions you'd like to ask? Okay. Uh, would everyone um, like to get a copy of the calendar of Enoch and calendar of Yah? Yes, please. Okay. Empty. Yes, please. I will look at one. Okay. Let me see if we can put it here in the chat. Okay, so is there available? Um, does anyone want the Book of Jubilees and the Book of Enoch as well? Okay. I will, please. All right, so let me put it there for you. Justin? Yes, sir. The book of Enoch you're using, how, how much of Enoch you're, are you using? Okay, so... The book of Enoch that I have here is the one translated by R.H. Charles. And it includes the, the book of Noah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that is, so this, is that... the first, this is the first book of Enoch. Right. Okay. It's cool. Not, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not Enoch 2 and Enoch 3. Those are different. Yeah. 
Ya kalau saya inak tu inak tu ya nak tu apa? 